Welcome one and all to this 54th episode of D&D with me, Mike. And me, And today we are going to be fixing a few bugs first, and then we're going to start designing our new, our new enemy type. So in order to demonstrate one bug that we have found, uh, I don't know if there are more, there may be some, I want that cat. Uh, Absolutely nothing. More cash. Ah. Ah. There we go. Uh, okay. Oops. Uh huh. Catch me. So I was gonna say, in order to demonstrate what the bug is, I need to get there first. But uh, I'll be there soon. That's the room where the bug happens. So, you see <coughs> the color of the teleport. The Checkpoint is green now, right? That oh, means yeah, this it's been bug. selected. The guy also does a little jump when he crosses. Uh, yeah, that may be too complicated to fix. Oh. Yeah, uh, at least with our current situation. Right? The way we're jumping is basically we are losing ground contact for a certain amount of time, and we may not have ground contact with that point. <laughs> Smooth. Goodbye. Alright, here we go. Alright, game starting to have some longevity now. Run, forest, I mean swim. Right, so up. His name is not Forest. Forest. Okay, that's his new name, I guess. Oh, no more Ted. No, no, his name is Ted. Forest, uh, run, forest is in a film it's called Forest Gump. Oh. oh dear! <laughs> Forest can't run. And the challenges are complicated. Alright, we're through. Now the problem with this teleportation is it's green, but it works. Right now, do you know why it's green? B. Maybe because it thinks that... Because it's in the same quadrant? Yes, correct, but not particularly clever, but correct. Uh, so the issue here is that uh, we are using only one material and we need two. We need a material for an active teleport and a material for a non-active teleport. That's what we need. Uh, <coughs> so what we're going to do, the first thing to do is we need to duplicate that material. So let's see the situation here. Uh, materials map, I think. It'll be entities, it'll be. And we've got spawn point. See how it's green? Yes. Okay, I'll duplicate this one. And rename this one to spawn point active. No spaces, banana. Active. Hit enter. And then this one is going to be spawn point inactive. Mm -hmm. And for inactive, we're going to go to this sort of sign or whatever. Right? So, um... We need to <coughs> quickly check how we're dealing with that particular thing, but somewhere there's going to be that particular um, thing. Now, it may be in the spawn point. I'm not sure. We're going to have a prefab for that, I'm guessing. Entities, right? spawn point, that's the one. And in here, there is a spawn point, but it doesn't seem to say anything about that. Let's see when we set it up. Activated, activated is true. Update spawn point material. That's the key. Right, aha. Uh -huh. So we're never actually inquiring as to what that particular material is. Yeah. So that's going to be a bit of a problem. Now, what we can do instead is have two materials uh, that we store here. So you can go serialize field. Serialize the field. Wait a moment. It's strangely went there. System. We're not using system. Try again. So the ser S E R and hit tab. Yeah. Now close it. Serialize field. Private. A material array. How many materials do we want? Two. Mm -hmm. And then uh, call this one uh, materials. Glow materials. Where? Uh. 
Just in case we'll hurt their specification. <coughs> sure, spawn point can all materials. Equals default. Oops. Undo. That's definitely not what it equals. Equals default. Tab. Semicolon. So, uh, for, yeah. Save. <laughs> You right. said so tab, the, yeah, so I know, I know, I know what I said. So here, what we're gonna say is we need to assign. So what, 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 what renders things in a three D game? <coughs> is there a three D a render? A mesh a render. Mesh yes, render. but we got a problem. This mesh renderer has two materials, and you can see it right here. See, it's got two materials. Uh -huh. So we also need access to the granite material. So we need three materials. Uh, pretty much. So copy all of this, paste it here, remove the array, spawn point uh, body material, and then remove, just type material now. Yeah, I don't think the word color was necessary, but that's okay, save. Hello. So we got this material as well. And uh, now one private thing we're going to need in setup is we need our renderer, right? Because that's who we need to impact. So here you're going to go private, mesh renderer, and just call it MR, semicolon. So here at the beginning of, of this, you can say MR equals. Now, where's the mesh renderer? Do you remember? It's in the spawn point. So we are at the spawn point. Yeah. But is it inside here? I don't think so. Mesh renderer is not it's in the model. It's a model. So you need to go transform.find first. Transform.find. Open round. Quote. <coughs> no, no, wrong bracket bananas. <coughs> quote. Model. model. Close Spell. the quote. Close the round. Dot get component. I know. Do, 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 Oop, do. Is that why you typed get child? <laughs> get That's component. That's typing errors. <laughs> of type mesh render close it open close round semicolon now when we update the spawn point material which is here we're going to use this we're going to have to create an array of materials and feed it to this <clears throat> so the first thing you want to create a material array here on the fly Mats M-A-T-S equals new space tab open square bracket two close square bracket semicolon. Now remember the first one is granite, right? Yeah. So copy mats. So the first one, square bracket zero, equals, and you're gonna feed it this one. Copy and paste it here. Semicolon. Save. Now <clears throat> we need to deal with mats one. So copy this one, paste it here. One equals, and now we need the tertiary operator that depends on activated. So how do you do that? Uh, like, <clears throat> <clears throat> do we open any brackets? No, just type activated, and then how do you tell it if? I think question mark. Yeah. If and activated. this one would be true, right? So if it's activated, then which of these materials do you feed it? We feed it to the second one. Yeah. Otherwise? Otherwise, then we feed it the first one. Yeah, semicolon. Now, I would like to do this differently. I'd like to use the tertiary operator in the int phase because we know it's the same array. So we're going to cut, delete this, cut this. Paste it here. Otherwise, oops. Otherwise, what? Then it's zero. Yes. Save. Okay. So this is we've got the materials correctly stored now. Now we need to assign them. So remove this and say uh, mat. I mean mr. Dot. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> shared <coughs> materials plural equals mats semicolon save and that's that 
right? So I noticed that the map has these materials saved over there. Let's go and remove, or at least one of them. Because we've put them directly in, in here. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Because we put them directly in here now, that doesn't matter. So, material spike, material spawn point, material spawn point colors, all of this goes. Save. See, it's not complaining because all the dependencies are already taken care of. Yeah. Okay. So now all we need to do is assign them these materials. Right? So we need two. One is granite. This one. This one is spawn inactive, and this is spawn active. Done. So if we're correct, this should, should work. work. Yeah, I'm screwing you, D. You're fine. Okay, so this one's green, right? Oh, this one's green too. Uh oh. Because so we we've already pressed it, those. No, uh, that shouldn't matter. So, well, actually, let's test something real quick for. So I'll leave and then come back. Shouldn't make a difference. This one should remain green and this one's now blue. Yeah. Hmm, that's strange. So I think we have a bug because if we launch it now, you'll see that it will be green. The left one. Yeah, see? So the problem is it's loading incorrectly, but that's strange. I don't understand how come. Uh, Load saves would probably be the one we have to uh, Sure, but this is the key to everything and it's set up. So let's read the setup here. Mm -hmm. Roll coordinates, quadrant coordinates, okay. If game manager, script, player is not null. Activated is quadrant coordinates equals the spawn coordinates n. Current quadrant equals the spawn quadrant. Hmm. That's very strange. Type debug log. And we're gonna go with <coughs> copy both of these, paste them here. And here you go plus VS plus. Okay, and then another plus. And then these, and these, and another plus. Copy all of this. Wait, I missed the letter. Copy again. Paste. Oh, undo. Undo again. Paste. Copy this. Paste. <coughs> Semicolon. <coughs> Shift tab. Save. Oh, look at this. This is a hack. I've just noticed that we don't need this debug log. If game manager script player is not null. That means... So the problem is this gets activated before the player gets activated. So we hacked this solution to be quick in a fix. And now it's biting us in the rear end. Because... It cannot work this way. It's wrong. If you have two checkpoints in the area and you don't have the player yet, which is at the start of the game, yeah. <clears throat> then we just say activated is true. Now with that said, um, it really depends on how we set up our game in the future. Because if we do not have a player at all in the scene yet, and we load the map right away, which is what we're doing. Excuse me. It's going to be exceedingly improbable that this is what we're actually going to be doing in the future as well. So I'm almost tempted to leave this alone, this little bug. And because um, it will fix itself by making the situation impossible. At the moment, we are creating a prototype game. So we don't have a menu. We don't have any of that stuff, right? And because of that, everything's firing all at the same time. So we're getting these odd logic problems where I can set up a spawn point, but I don't have a player yet. Yeah. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I don't know. Uh, right, because we're looking for player current quadrant. 
player attribute spawn quadrant. Right, so if the quadrant of the player is here. Oh, blimey. Uh, there is no, wait, there is a fix that we could do either way. Whether the player is present or not. Yeah, check this out. Here's what we're gonna do. It's not gonna be perfect, it's gonna be better than this. Copy all of this, paste it here, and <coughs> remove the second condition. Save. Because the second condition does not, uh, does not care about whether the player exists or not. It depends on player attributes. Now let's see if this is gonna work. It could work, it could be a fix. Even though again, I don't particularly think this is gonna be a problem in the future, but there you go. Yep, yeah, it's fixed it. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> now let's see properly if it's fixed it. I'm gonna go left. I need to reopen the gate now. We forget. Oh boy. And hurt. Hurt in the butt. Alright, no, let's not go. This is blue, the other one is green. This is green, yeah, the other, other one is green. green. Okay, so we got another problem too. Which is, <coughs> once you hit a, a spawn point, the other spawn point needs to be unselected. Now we've never done this, right, before. So we've got this... Yes, we have to the switches. Yes, of course, but to the switches is a different story. So on trigger enter, if not activated, activate this true blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine. But this is a bit of a problem. We need to deactivate the other ones. Um, we need to request a deactivation. Um, of, yeah, something like deactivate all and then Activate all yeah, so let's create a public void right here And go deactivate spawn point Open close round open a squiggle uh -huh. And here what you're gonna say is copy activated equals true. It's actually false And then copy all of this and paste it here. Oops, I think I pressed insert or something. I'm not sure. Save. All right, so now we have these ready. Now what we can do is we can go to the <coughs> map and see if there's something we can do here. Um, I think we need to have a public <coughs> void deactivate spawn points open close open screen say you all right and uh, don't know if we have it as an entity but I don't think so so here's what we gotta do do we have a container for those entities aha uh -huh. entity containers and it's probably depending yeah so it depends on on this Right, so copy this, and here we're gonna type for each tab tab, and paste it here, and square bracket, and here you're gonna type uh, entity tile, I believe it's called. So. That's the one dot uh, spawn point. point close the square bracket save okay instead of var item it's going to be spawn point sp and here you're gonna say sp dot deactivate spawn point open close around semicolon so we can now copy all of this. Go into our spawn point and right here you can say map 
dot script dot paste semicolon. So before we activate this one, we deactivate all of them first. Simple as really. All right. Let's see if this is gonna work. So first of all, check if the other one's blue, and it is. Go to the. <coughs> Now that we're here, check if that one's blue. It is. I'm gonna have to eat that. The goal now is to activate the new one and see if the old one gets turned off. Point off the wall. Cast. Exception. Specified cast is not valid. It's a cast. Entity tile. Ah, this is a transform. Oh. Get components in children. Components in children. This one of type <coughs> spawn point. <coughs> Close, open, close, run. Yeah, that's better. Now we have the correct stuff being compared. All right, so now let's redo this uh, again. Actually, it's just not maximized, so we can keep checking sort of quickly. That's blue, that one's green. All right, let's go north. <laughs> Just because I'm lazy, right? So right one should be blue, and it is. Left one is green, and it is. Let's just zoom into the green one so we can see that one. Okay, now as I hit blue, that one went blue. This one's green. Yes. And if we leave, and then come back, blue, green. Awesome. And that bug can officially be considered squashed. So that's done. <coughs> now. We said that another thing that we need to do is do this new enemy type, right? And this new enemy type should be some kind of uh, a character that basically chases, like he patrols or stands still, whatever, right? When he sees you, he chases you. Yes, yeah, so do you want him to stay still or to patrol? But or both. Not, st could, stay could, still until he sees the player, then moves. Yeah. Not like the bombs. Does he ever stop, be stop becoming aggro? Uh, we can't really do that. We don't have anything particularly intelligent going on. I We're not using A star, so that's going to be wait, a problem. Wait, I think there should be two types of enemies. One of them that stays still and acts like a barrier mm -hmm. that you can't just kick. That if you're facing, you can't kick down. But if you're at the at its back, you can kick down. And okay, so sort of like a... could be a guard that chases you instead okay <clears throat> so so be hit from behind can it be <coughs> killed this enemy by sword slash yes okay so this this wall can both be killed from behind by being kicked or by being slashed mm -hmm. by being slashed anywhere by being kicked from behind okay um, well it's a bit of a waste though the way we set it up because it's a really interesting enemy and we're never using him uh, if we give the sword to the player this early in the game, then it's a waste of opportunity. But that's okay. We can just move the spiral room to wherever we want to and give the sword later. Yeah. I don't think it's an issue. So I really like the the wall enemy. I think it's a, it's a very interesting idea. Does he ever turn around? No, he faces one direction. Okay, so you need to always reach him from behind. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting puzzling system. Like the level I have made this one. These guys were supposed to be annoying enemies. Does the enemy hurt you when you approach him? If you touch him from the front, yes. He from will, the back, no. What will he do? Slash you or something? He'll hit you with his spear. Spear? Spear. Imagine the guys holding spears. Okay. So like this, Just poke you. Yeah. And the guy will go ow. Okay, and he can't miss, right? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. 
Well, just that, pokes you. that's interesting enough. So we need to go to Magicka Voxel. Make him. Do, 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 do. <coughs> 64, 64, 64. We need to make it. Okay. Then. Oops. Um, B, F. Attach. Okay, so this guy's going to be fairly narrow. Kind of one space worth. Something like that. And uh, uh, he needs to be taller. Right? Um, yeah. And probably thicker. Now we still need to give him arms though. So. And he needs to hold the little spear. Or the. Yeah, maybe multiple spears. One in each hand, maybe? Hmm? Well, I mean, hands would make it really complicated. Why don't we just put spikes into the wall? Like here, and then they just come out or something. Maybe. Yeah. Right? What if there is no wall? What do you mean? Like, beside the guy, there would be no wall. I mean, this would be the, the guy. The guy is a wall. Yeah, right? uh, much. We We could make it... Because that way it's much simpler, right? We don't have to uh, worry a whole lot about all sorts of... Uh, uh, crazy difficult things. I mean, and in the end of the day, we're not making this game commercially, right? If it doesn't look brilliant, who cares? Um, hmm, I don't know. Because the problem with the arm is that you're going to have to have him... Uh, maybe he throws a spear that chases you and hits you every time, or it's so fast that it'll always hit you, something like that. That would work too. But the, the thing is, the throwing doesn't make sense because there's contact. The thing that makes the most sense to me is that Okay, so what if it was some kind of like spiked shield and the spikes all come out, but at the back it doesn't have a spiked shield? Yeah. Something like that, right? So at the back, so maybe there at the back there's a guy holding it. A shield up. Yeah. Uh, so you so. see the guy's butt and you can kick it. Yes. So it will be something along these lines, more or less. And in fact, wait. It's not worth having this. It would be much better to have some kind of circle. And then we'll deal with that. So, circle. I know there's a way to do a sphere. Press this. There, wait, huh? There was a way that a guy showed us to do a sphere. Yeah, obviously I completely forgot. Press sphere was something like... Yeah. Cube sphere. It's a one. We need to draw our imaginary actually their line. <coughs> this will do. And then what I'll do is I'll reverse it. I'd like it also to be much more oval than this, but yeah, that's it's quite a bit of work. Um, I've got an idea. Let's see if we can do this for the 32. Let's do. To make it less work? This is going to be more work. A lot more work. Uh, yeah. So you can hold it. Yeah. See? So it's like internal, but that's a lot of polygons. <laughs> How? Okay, we'll mirror it. Tell you what, we'll mirror it in, in um, Blender. I'm not even concerned about it being. Uh, done here, okay? Okay, so Blender is easier. Yeah, Blender is way easier to use than this. And yeah, basically the spikes are all going to come out and stuff will happen. Now, so that's the shield. We need uh, to make his body like a man. Yeah, well, we can use our own fella for that. Yeah. Our own little guy. 
So I think that's probably sufficient. We just have to change his face to make an angry one. Uh, you were not going to see him anyway, so... Unless you're at the back, then you will see his body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so projects. Uh, to the good. Build. No, none of these is right. That's tabletop gear, I think, twice. So it's not here, it's, it's in Zoe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and you can call this one shield. Sealed. PMY. Alright, so now here um, we should have uh, models, characters. Let's actually do it there. Eh? Oh, my bad. Wrong file. That's what I meant to open. Alright, so here's the characters. Uh, never mind, actually. Apparently, these are not the characters. Grandia 2 Anniversary Edition. Player. Okay, let's go here. See, here's the little player fella. He's already fairly underdressed, so this should be should be quite helpful. He has only underpants on. <sighs> Alright. So... Here, we're going to import we're doing this on the player we're not making him what? we're not keeping him we're over going to overwrite him we're not going to overwrite anything uh, it's going to be fine Dropbox you can just press ah, it was there oh, never mind that was okay. in the re Woohoo! So, step number one. You need to be divided by 64 everywhere. There we go. Step number two. Hit tab. Uh, R, Z, Uh, and we need to move them further a bit. Move it further a bit, like so. Or something. Okay. Now <coughs> we're going to need uh, space, remove doubles. No. Boom. Doubles. All right. So we lost a bazillion, trillion, million, zillion vertices. And how? Uh, and yeah, I think the best thing to simply do is to simplify. That's it. So right. what's it called again? Uh, I think limited it's to limited dissolve. That's it. There we go. So we have reduced the amount of polys. It's still a ton of them, but that's okay. So now what we need is we need all of them spikes. Yes. We need a bunch of spikes. Uh, and we have a lot of end guns here. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to fix this, you'd take all day. Yeah. Right? Because the problem is it's on the other side. In fact, I don't even think you'll take all day. You just I don't think you can. That's yeah. one central problem with voxel art, Actually, especially maybe, when it's this big. But maybe you could do some mirroring. Uh, the mirroring wouldn't really help. In fact, I think it would add a few polygons. Oh. Yeah. I don't think you can get much better than this. That's basically the problem. So, anyway, the... What was I going to say? I can't remember. But yeah, there's the shield. Now the shield needs to animate, so we need to give it those spikes. Now I know a place that has those spikes. The spikes. The spikes. <laughs> Alright, so... There. Now hit Control C. Hit Control V. 
hit tab. Um, hit her. Look what's there. Yeah. And we are going to hit R. Uh, X90. It's going through the player. Yeah, well, we, we need to worry about these things in a second. So. He got stabbed. Something uh, along these lines. Uh, probably. Actually, maybe a bit longer. There. Now hit A to select all. Again. And now we're going to drag this over here. That's when it comes out and spikes you. Okay. And now just give me a bit of room because this is going to be a bit of a pain to do. Um, <clears throat> What would be the best thing? Well, I think that basically we would need to have these spikes be placed directly on the object and they should grow. I think we're going to create an animation ourselves. Uh, I mean, not in here, but we're going to do it via code because it's going to be the cheapest thing to do. So here we're going to hit Shift S, cursor to selected, <coughs> Control Shift Alt C, origin to 3d cursor why did we do this because now if you resize on the y oh yeah see what happens mm -hmm. so we can put it at zero right like this and then we go boom and we just sort of sort of slam it out you know yeah. like this we go as far as we want and then we can put them everywhere and the same thing will happen so that's pretty decent that should be okay uh, and uh, let's do it. Yeah, so this one's still called spike and that's just fine and this one shield I'm just gonna rename it to shield the spike so we don't get confused with the other one Shield shield spike Okay, I think I forgot to hit control a location rotation and scale Sh oh, Never mind in fact, this one, ah, no, this one's correct because we want it to be at the feet of the player so we don't have to worry. So now the only thing that's left to worry about is the animation of the player. Yes, right? we need to make him an animation of holding that thing. Yeah. Now, obviously, so Z. We need to make a new one first. Oh, yeah, good point. For messing uh, with player, player punch. punch the game. Player idle. Let's go with this one. Duplicated, rename this one to player shield okay, enter <coughs> Alright, so it's gonna be player shield and uh, But it won't be the player, it will be the enemy shield. Yeah, it's fine, it doesn't matter. Because we're gonna use the player model, so now we press play. Okay, so that's pretty good. All right, and now all we need to do is we need to actually change this pose quite a bit. So, G, R, 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 S, R. R. Control. Hold it. R Z. Oh my bad. Try with R Y. Oh darn it. R. 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 Hmm, not convinced by the legs. G. R. G. 
R R G R G He looks like he's running forward with that. He's pushing it, right? So he's pushing the shield forward. Um, and uh, or holding it sort of and then when you hit him in the back boom oh he needs to have an animation for falling forward and dying hey, it's gonna become complicated uh, I think we may do it via code or we may simply defeat him or something maybe we hit, he can disappear I mean it's not brilliant for now right but we'll worry about that later so hit A A I. All right. Hit uh wait. Shift D. Shift D. Need to make some movement. Yeah. All right. G. R. 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 Whoops. R. 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 A. A. I. All right, let's see. Maybe his legs should have some movement. Yeah, they are a bit static. <laughs> but it's kind of normal that they would be. His feet would be planted. Okay, just R. Means the movement. R. R. A A I. Okay, I think that's pretty good. <coughs> so we got the little fella. He's doing his own thing. Now, I think that these guys, once spawned, right? Yeah. And you defeat them. They stay defeated. They stay defeated, right? I, I don't see how we would deal with the um, problem of the... Uh, excuse me. With the problem of the um, um, checkpoints otherwise. I mean, one option otherwise would be for them to not stay defeated, uh, but then that completely changes the pu the the puzzles too. So that's important to understand. That would be a rush puzzle. A what? A rush through puzzle before they respond. Well, no, no, it would be a puzzle that's sequential, right? Oh. So you go, you do a thing, and then once you've done it, you can go back, which I think could be interesting, which effectively turns them into one-way doors. Right, so uh, <clears throat> you you go behind them and you push them, and maybe as you push them, you rotate them and you go through. Mm. That could work. And if you have a sword, you can kill them. Yeah, you could break the shield and break them. Not break the shield, no. I don't think you should be able to do it from the front. So when you can only kick, right, you kick them to go through. If you have a bomb, you launch a bomb towards them and you kill them. Should you be able to kill them from the front with a bomb? I don't think so. I think it should be from the back only. Which is going to cause us some interesting problems, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and then there is the... And then there is the ability to pick them up, which you wouldn't have. You can't pick them up. They're yeah. going to be considered heavy items. And if you kick them, you just sort of flip them, and unless then you we, pass. That you get some sort of, unless we make a treasure where you get you can your man gets stronger. I guess, but it will cause all sorts of problems because picking these up wouldn't be that easy. They would look weird. Yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, I think that's not that bad. It's simple, but it should do. Okay, so we can close this. We can close this. And now in the player, there's a new animation. Yep. Here it is. 
Okay, so add the animation. It's going to be player <laughs> shield. Uh, whatever it says, it needs to loop. Yes, yes, and yes, all original. Apply. Now we need to add. We can't add it to the tree, to the animator event. Yes, we can. Uh, in fact, we will. We're going to open the player here. <clears throat> and uh, We need to make this separate from all the rest. This is not for the player. Yep, yeah, create state, empty. Actually, you know what? You're right. Let's create a completely new animator. Create... Animator controller, yes. Rename it to shield enemy. Mm -hmm. And shield enemy is going to have a state, and this state is going to be player shield. And it's an entry. We need to call it player shield. Sure. Uh, shield I will call it. Shield item. Yeah, now if you have an animation like a dine or whatever else, right, we'll worry about that later. Now, in the prefabs, let's go and duplicate the player. Yep. Oops. Oh. Rename it to uh, enemy sh shield enemy. Yeah, shield enemy. Yeah, and we're gonna drag it into my enemies. Okay, enemy bomb. Okay, let's rename this one to enemy shield then. Just to be consistent. What you need to re rename one thing. Oh, you're fine. You don't need to do anything. Well, we need to go to the shield enemy. It's color. fine. No, that's the animator controller. It doesn't matter. Right. <clears throat> okay, so enemy shield here. Now, there's a bunch of things to do. Number one, you're not a player. You are an interactive entity, though. And then you have an enemy script. Then there's the enemy bomb. So for now, we're just going to go with enemy script. Uh, so add, type E. All right, enemy. <coughs> right here. So we got the enemy. Um, copy component base component values. I'm just going to leave it as it is for now, same as the bomb, right? Then we'll see. Um, it needs to have a vision module, I think, uh, of a certain type, and I think it's probably good that it's exactly this, because it's fairly small. Yeah. Uh, sword holder. Wait. Only if you get in front of, right in front of him. That's right. You come to pass. It should go. Well, I mean, he'll spike you, so it'll be fairly clear that you can't pass, as you say. Yeah. Okay, um, I don't know what those two are, but we'll see. So, target, what's this? Uh, I don't know that we need it at all. HUD, we definitely don't need. Attack cone, we do need, I think. Uh, maybe. Actually, no, I don't think we do. By attack cone, picked up container. No oh, need yeah. vision cone. Definitely Needed. need sword, sword holder. holder. This guy doesn't hold a sword. Well, we will, he holds a shield. So. Yeah, so we call it shield holder. All sorts of wrong. Shield. Okay, now the shield holder is presently at zero, which is surprising. I think we need to move it down to 0.5, assuming that's what we want to do, which I don't think is a good idea. I think it'd be better to leave it here and change the model, which is what we're going to do. So let's go back to models and open the player once more. And for the shield holder, oops, okay. We are going to need a uh, control shift C, uh, control A, control A, hello, oh, okay, well, control A, darn it, location. 
All right. Where's the A? Eh? Where? Mm. That's surprising. Control Alt C. Can you turn the or origin two three cursor? No, that's not what I want. I want cursor. Listen to me. Should be somewhere here. Where's the cursor information? Shading. 3D cursor. Put it at 0, 0 0.5, 0. Oops, it's 0 0.5. That is wrong. What do we mean to say 0 0.5 here? There. I want it to be in the middle of the player, like so. Okay, and now I'll shift C. And it's going to be origin to 3D cursor. And now we're going to save. Okay, so now it's going to do some thinking for a bit. And the sword. Oh, I don't have that. Okay, there's the sword. I'm going to change the sword to the shield. Type shield. Save. To say it doesn't need a rigid body or a box collider, uh, but it does need to change in terms of okay. Notice that all of these proportions are wrong. Okay, now it needs to change the model from the cube to the shield. Okay, I'm so just to get a cup. <laughs> yeah, it's quite funny now. Not what we want. Uh, so let's rotate it on the x axis by 90, or rather 270. There we go. He's and, punching a cup. Uh, and now the shield should be capable of rotating around the player like this, which is good. Didn't know that little <sighs> circle appeared. Mm, yeah, well, if you press E. So you change the tool to that. Oh. So we got the shield. Now the shield is going to need, and the model, and the model, we're going to need spikes, basically. So I'll create an empty and call it spikes. Mm -hmm. Now, since we're here, let's change the material in the shield to nose for now. I don't know. Okay, we'll worry about that later. Now, the spikes need to duplicate the model and call this one zero yeah. and this one we're going to change to a shield spike there it's, it is it, it's stabbing him and we're going to move it to about here it's filled with blood sure okay now what we're going to do is we're going to be clever i want you to create an empty <laughs> and drag this spike into it and if I'm correct now, this, yeah. so it's a bit imperfect because it doesn't depend on this actual position as it should. So let's fix it, move it to about here, then grab the spike, move it to about here. Okay, so now the spike is in there, but I should be able to rotate it. Exactly. So now we're going to create a bunch of spikes. Okay. All right. So, control. Uh, wait, I'm going to create a bunch of these game objects actually. So let's name this one from zero to spike. Just one. I'm going to duplicate this game object and rotate it. Duplicate this game object and rotate it. Now normally, as you know, I do all of this with precise numbers, right? Yes. This time around, I'm not going to do it with precise numbers. And the reason why that is, is because it's going to look much more interesting if it isn't done with precise numbers. Looks like this Statue of Liberty from the top with two missing spikes. Yeah. Oh, now too many. Now it doesn't. Oh. That's a lot. That's an evil guy, this guy, you know? What if there's walls or other guys beside him? Whatever, he'll hit the wall. Or the other guys, we could kill him, it'd be funny. 
Yeah, you could you could have to get yourself hurt to get them out of the way. Man's in trouble figuring out which one I'm looking at. Okay, so that's one. And I'm gonna duplicate this one. Rotate it down. Yeah, I think that's a bit absurd. I don't think we need all of that. Bit too many. Yeah, and maybe these ones on the sides are a bit excessive too. Especially because the cone is not really gonna hit there. Yeah. So let's quickly press this. Okay, this one's one of the ones on the side. No, yes. No. No, yes. No, no, yes. No, 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 yes. No, 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 no. Oh, I must have skipped it. Yes. There we go. So now you have these three spikes here in front. Yes. And now, what's spot. the advantage of them again, right? Is that we can just shrink them. Yep. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to use basic trickster animations to just you know make them work basically just like that and this is what we're gonna do next time because we're out of time but we're gonna do this <laughs> and then sometimes they go and they spike him and <laughs> Poor guy. Okay. okay so there goes that's pretty good and yeah next time we're gonna start setting up all of the rest now one quick thing on the avatar the player no a shield enemy that's what we want and we have an animation helper which is interesting uh, in the interactive enemy will have it yes I think this could possibly be useful I don't know I don't think so now that I think about it but we can worry about that Ugh, some other time so because we only have the idle animation I'm thinking the way you're gonna pass by him is that you're gonna scare him or tickle him basically kick him in the butt and he's just gonna throw the shield up and then you're gonna pass right under and then yeah. he puts the shield back down and he's gonna go ah yeah, that sort of stuff so that should work pretty well okay yeah let's remove this component from from here cool and now that we're done with all of this uh thanks very much for watching and we will see you again next time when we continue working on this character bye bye <laughs>